Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. This is Catherine Raker of The Chef, you and I, and guess what? I have an exciting show today all the way to Mexico, and I'm so excited because I have so many Hispanic friends, Spanish friends that love to make some of the things that I'm learning how to make, and one of those things today is from a very good friend of mine that used to own a wonderful Mexican restaurant in Texas. His name is Lyle Olki, and he has given me all of his recipes for tamales and for Texas chili and for Mexican rice. And this is my first time to do it. So you'll have to, you can all judge me on it, but let me tell you, um, I tried it a couple of weeks ago and now I think I have it down to a science, I hope. So anybody that would like to send me any of their recipes, we would love to have them. So just, you know, send it to me at kraker123 at gmail.com, and we will be glad to feature your recipes. I want to thank the wonderful products that we use on our show. And one of those wonderful set of products is 360 cookware or AmeriCraft cookware on our shows. Also, we are using some really interesting things from a wonderful place that's very close to me. It, and, and you can get all of those wonderful uh, Mexican or, or Hispanic products, which you need to make this wonderful thing. But the first thing that we're going to do today is I'm going to give you the recipe. And we're going to walk you through it so it makes it easy for you. So the first thing you're going to need for your tamales is these wonderful corn husks. And you'll see them right there. And you need to clean them off because sometimes they get dirt. Sometimes they have the, um, you know, like the, the silky, the silky, hair on them that you get when you get corn. So these are corn husks that are dried. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these dried corn husks and we're going to soak them in very hot water or boiling water. And then you want to put a bowl or a cup or something on top of the corn husk and you want them to be submerged. So our camera guy is going to come on over and we're going to show you how we're going to do these wonderful corn husks. So let's go over to our hot water pan and our bowl that we're going to use. So here's what the corn husk look like and we've cleaned them off so we're going to put them in this in this bowl and and you're going to soak them so they'll get soft so that we can use them for our tamales. Okay, so I'm going to do this really fast, right? And you want to put them down in here. And then we're going to weigh it down. I have 13, we, there's only two of us that are eating these wonderful tamales. And by the way, you can freeze tamales before you cook them. So we're going to do just that. And here's what we're going to do is we're going to take, and we're going to take our hot water, and we're going to pour it over the corn husk. And then we're going to let those corn husk um, uh, actually sit in the hot water. And you can do it in tepid water, but you got to leave it a lot longer. So I, I tend to use boiling water when we do this. And I'm going to have to pour the rest of it. And this is that 360 pan I love. And it's an 8 quart. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour it over the, uh, the corn husk. Okay, there we go. That's wonderful. So let's just put that back here. And we're then what we're going to do is, so what you want to do is you want to submerge your, your corn husk and you want to use something that can sit on top of the corn husk so they're all submerged. Okay, so we're going to leave this right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our chilies next and we're going to boil our chilies 
and that's going to be really cool. So we're going to do that next. Now we're back, and these are the wonderful uh, Chili Anjo, and they are by Goya. I, I love their products, and um, actually, um, they're all prepackaged. And what you're going to do is you're going to open it up, and I use rubber gloves when I do chilies, okay? And this is what they look like, okay? They look like that. And we're going to take the stem off, but you're going to boil. You can go ahead and boil the chilies with the stems right now. And some of these have already got the seeds out. So sometimes they crack or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these chilies into hot water or boiling water. And we're going to let those boil for like about 20 or 30 minutes until they're really soft. So that's the next step you have to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give the recipe for our pork, okay? And I'm using pork loin, which um, I'm going to take a little break here and get the pork loin so I can put it into my hot pot with the with the, uh, actually the broth that we're gonna use and also an onion. And if you're a garlic lover, almost every tamale has garlic in the meat when you're processing it or getting it ready. Um, the other trick I learned uh, from one of my wonderful friends, Luciana Halgun, Halgun, told me that when his wife makes tamales, she actually doesn't shred the meat. She just cuts it up in small pieces. And that's what we're going to do on this recipe today. Uh, because I think sometimes when you're shredding stuff, gets it in your, you know, it, it's not good. So what we're doing is we're chopping up the meat to put into the tamales in the end. So let's do this. Let's take a little break. I'll get the meat prepared to go into our hot pot along with with my onion and my and my wonderful broth. Okay, we'll be right back. We're back on the chef, you and I, and I now have, I'm gonna put that aside, I have two onions, two small onions that I'm gonna use along with my pork, and I want our cameraman to see what I'm, just like this, because you don't need to do any more than that. And then just put them down into the pan, right? Or here in the center, it doesn't matter. And, Basically, I'm using pork loin because if I used a regular pork roast, I'd have to cut a lot of the fat off. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm using salt, grounded salt, about a teaspoon. And that's about a teaspoon right there. And then pepper, ground pepper. I like to grind everything. I, I love uh, fresh pepper and, and fresh salt. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two... Um, these are 32 ounce uh, chicken stock. And you wanna cover, I use a hot pot because it's a lot faster and more efficient. And I get it done so I can actually, you know, have the meal done when I want to. And so the nice thing about, the nice thing about it is I'm not even gonna have to use two of these, I don't think. And I wanna fill that up, cover the meat, and makes it simple. And these are, lo these are low sodium. I, I, I like using uh, this type of um, broth. So we're almost done here. That's covering everything. And then we'll cook this for 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the hot pot, okay? And so we're done with that. And we're done with this one. And no, we're fine. And so we're gonna, we're gonna put that on, on a temperature, and then in a minute we're going to actually turn the uh, stove or the oven on because we're gonna make our cornbread ahead of time. So we'll be right back on The Chef, you and I, after these important messages. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and I just pre-sprayed the pan for our cooking show. And this is a heavy-duty 360 cookware baking pan, which is a 9 by 12. And I love it because it's heavy, and the cornbread comes out perfectly in this pan. But you can use any of your pans, your 9 by 12, a glass, whatever. Okay, so the first thing that we've done is to spray the pan. We're going to move the pan over. And what we're going to do is bring our bowl over. And the one thing I want to tell you about this beautiful corn meal that I used is I use popcorn. And this is what Lyle's um, 
Oki's recipe calls for is yellow popcorn that you get at the store, right? And what you do is you grind it in your blender or food processor, either blender or food processor. And what you need to do is to continually uh, do it over and over again until it gets to be con So if the producer could hand me that, I can show you that. Um, what you do once you grind it, then you put it through a sieve like this, and you keep doing it until it becomes powdery like this that you can see. So in order to get two cups, you're going to need about 14 ounces of the popcorn that you grind twice at least. And then you also use a um, sifter to get it down to what it looks like here. So here is two cups of my cornmeal. And the other thing is I'm going to put this in first, right? That's two cups. And we, we want to get all of that out, right? So that's really good. And then we're going to add to that um, actually all of our other ingredients. So this is the, this is the flour. Uh, the half a cup of flour, and I use gluten-free. You can use whatever kind of flour you want. Okay, so put that in there. And then you're going to put the masa, which is a, another half a cup of masa, right? And then one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm using, if you like not sweet cornbread, then only use one-third of a cup of sugar. This is about a half a cup of sugar that I'm going to add to it because I like it sweeter. Or you can use Splenda. You can use whatever you want, right? So let's get all that salt out. Okay. And then you want five teaspoons of baking powder. So this is the baking powder. I've already pre-mixed it, right? So we want to use that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our egg. There's three eggs that I did right here. And let's see, do that. And then it's one and three quarters cup of milk. And you can use 2%. You can use one and a half percent. Okay, so we've got that. And now what we're going to do is we're mixing it together until it gets nice and mixed. You don't want to beat it to the death, though. So you just want to mix it together and make sure you get all the lumps out. Right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it into our baking pan at 375 degrees, which you preheated the oven. Right. And you're going to bake that for at least, um, I'd say, 30 minutes. But you want, when you're baking it, you want to make sure you can use like um, uh, a toothpick or whatever to make sure it comes out clean because you want the, the uh, cornbread to be really done. So anyhow, and this is such a simple recipe. I want the camera to get this lovely color that we have. And it was so fun doing the popcorn. Actually, my husband helped me do it all. And it was kind of like a family thing that you could do even with your grandchildren so that they can see it. And if you have any popcorn left and that didn't get all the way ground, you can use it for to make wonderful... Um, grits for breakfast. So they'd be yellow grits, not white grits. So all these recipes have been tested for many years. And Lyle had a wonderful restaurant uh, that in Texas that he actually created all these recipes. And all of his Hispanic friends and friends came all the time to have his wonderful cooking. So this is pretty good. This looks really nice. And we're just going to pour this into that. Whoops. That pre, um, that pre prepared pan. So let's do this. Move this all away, and then you can see this right here. And I'm going to put it in here. Wait, hold on. And I'm going to pour this into the batter into the pan. It doesn't take much to do it. And wait till you see how beautiful turns out. And I like to use honey with my uh, cornbread, but you don't have to if you're watching your diet. And it's, it turns out absolutely delicious. And you can freeze it too. That's the cool part. I cut it up and fr froze it the last time I did it, and it turned out beautiful. So let's do this and put this aside. And we're going to put this in the oven and bake it for half an hour or 40 minutes. It all depends upon your oven. 
And we'll be right back after these important messages. And we're going to be making our wonderful tamales. We'll be right back. We are back on the Chef You and I, and our wonderful cornbread is done. And we're going to have that along with everything else with our Mexican dinner. But now we're making a Mexican salad. And this is an everyday Mexican salad. So the first thing that we need to do is I need to give you all the ingredients for the salad. So you have five ounces of mixed spring greens. We have one ripe avocado that's peeled, pitted, and sliced, a half of a small red onion peeled and thinly sliced, one cup of half cherry tomatoes, two-thirds cup of roughly chopped fresh cilantro. And we're not using pumpkin seeds because somebody in our family is not crazy about pumpkin seeds. And we're going to use, um, we're going to use fresco cheese or we're going to use, um, actually, we can also use any type of feta cheese or whatever cheese you like. And then uh, as soon as the salad's done, then I'll make the dressing for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually chop up our cilantro. And you want to chop this up real fine. And you're going to need two-thirds of a cup of it, okay? And I know my husband's not crazy for cilantro, but I love it. So I'm going to make him a separate salad because he's not crackers about cilantro. Some people can lo love it like I do, and then there's others that it, they don't like the taste of it. You use it a lot in seafood, and a lot of Asian foods you lose use it, and a lot of international foods you make it. So I'm excited. I love cilantro. It's, you can find it all the time during the year, and you can grow it. I mean, a lot of people, I have a lot of friends that grow a lot of their herbs and spices and dry them, you know, for the winter. So this is, should be about two-thirds of a cup. Let's look. I think that's uh, about two-thirds of a cup, almost. So I'll just add the rest of it. What the heck? Put that in there. Then you've got that. And then what we want to do is we want to um, go ahead and do our avocado. And this is the easiest way you can do it, right? And then you just peel it off like that, like that. See how easy that is? Take out your, take out the seed, which will come out easily, right? What you want to do is quarter them. So I'm going to quarter them like this, turn it over like that. Okay, and then what you do is just peel them back. Really simple. I love this. The easiest way you can do an avocado. Don't get it really soft because then they're hard to work with and you don't want them to be mushy unless you're making something else. Okay, that's that. It's a beautiful one. And they were very, they were on sale as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave those right there. And then you're just going to do this. One, two, three. So see how easy that was? Beautiful. I love avocado, and so does my husband. A lot of people love avocado, and they're really good for you, actually. So we'll get all that done. And then we're, gonna, we're going to add um, our wonderful red onion in a minute. Okay, put that out there, All right? This looks like a lot of avocado, right? Wonderful. And then I'll leave that for the top. Okay, so I'm going to clean this off a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to tear, actually tear my, my lettuce. And this is red lettuce, which I really love red lettuce. This is like a fresh lettuce. And everybody likes it because it's, it's, kind of it's a kind of a very dark, well, I wouldn't call it a red especially. I'd call it more of a maroon, right? But it's really colorful. That's the cool part about it. So, and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to add our onions and our tomatoes. And the salad will be done in a minute. So, and that's, this is only for two of us, so 
Anyhow, I'm going to be right back. I need to take a little break here and I need to clean off my my wonderful board and then we're going to do this. So just a second. We're back and I'm going to use a quarter of an onion because this is a big onion. So I'm going to half it right like that and put this aside. And then we're going to take these peels off the paper part of it and it makes it to be a perfect for a quarter of a quarter of an onion. Okay, so you want to do it like this, like that. Those turn out to be really pretty then. I love this type of onion. This is a sweet red onion. And you can get these usually all year long, especially in the summertime, right? Okay, that's good. All right. I'll do that like that as well. Okay, so then you can put this into your salad, right? So you just spread them apart and they look really pretty. A lot of color in this salad, right? And my husband loves onions, loves them. And so m most men do, you know, and they taste so good. So get all that in there. And it looks like it's enough onion to me, right? That's good. We'll save this for later. And then what you want to do is you want to do your tomatoes next. And since I didn't have any real cherry tomatoes, these are what they call cocktail tomatoes, right? Take that off, and then I'm going to cut these into quarters. Okay, that's pretty, like that. And if you have cherry tomatoes, you can do that. But I like, I love tomatoes, and they're really good right this time of year. So that's pretty awesome. So send in your send in your recipes because I love getting recipes. And even if they're a heavy duty recipe that I can make into, um, you know, a health healthy conscious type of recipe, we do that all the time. We're a healthy cooking show. And you'll probably see my new sign where it says 360 and our, our sh the name of our show, which is the chef you and I. And uh, we've been on the air quite a while now. We're, we're very proud of it. And if you want to be healthy like us, then you just have to change your habits, right? It's really not hard to do that. Um, so anyhow, uh, we're going to finish up with these tomatoes. And then I'm also going to put in some beautiful cheese, right? So there's that. I want to add some more of my avocado. Just put those on the top here, right? That's really pretty. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my I'm going to add my dressing. I'm going to make my dressing next because I kind of like my dressing on my salad. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put the cheese on next, and then I'll, then I'll do the um, salad dressing, okay? So this will actually be for enough for two, three, four people. That looks really nice. All right. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we'll put that there. Okay, now we're going to make the dressing. So just a second, I'll be right back. And now we're going to make our dressing in my wonderful bowl here, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to take three tablespoons of actually, or one tablespoon of fresh lime juice, which is right here. And we are going to add three tablespoons of olive oil, which is right here. We've pre, we've pre done that a little bit of cilantro in there. Well, get that out, put that in there. Okay, and then we're going to add our half a teaspoon of cumin. And then salt and pepper that I've already, half a teaspoon of fine sea salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. Or a fourth a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. That's that. And uh, I think that's about it. We're not putting garlic in because you know that Catherine can't eat garlic, unfortunately. And what we want to do is we want to blend all this together like this. Or you can actually shake it up in a shaker, right? And I'm blending it. 
looks really good actually. And you can see that that's got the lime juice in it and it's got the cumin. And cumin is really, people, people love cumin. I do too. So I'm going to pour this into my, and you can, and then I'm going to add this. Right. You know, you could always put a little bit more oil in it if you wanted it. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll just pour that right over the salad and we'll put the salad in the refrigerator for a little while till we have everything else done. So we'll take a little short break and when we come back, we'll be taking the peppers apart and that'll be a lot of fun. But we'll be right back. I'm going to show you how to make the tamales with everything that we have already been made ahead of time. We'll be right back. We're back on the chef, you and I, and now that our chilies, I, I boiled them for about 20 minutes till they get to look like this. And, and what we're gonna do, you see all those seeds, we don't want those seeds. So I've got a little thing of water that I'm gonna get rid of the seeds, right? That was good, makes it simple. No more seeds, right? Okay, so we'll do that, because we're gonna chop these up in a minute. And I wanna slice these. I've already taken the tops off. Now see those? Just do that, really easy, makes it simple. Okay, and then we're gonna put these in the blender in a minute, right? But you wanna get all the seeds out. Some people like the seeds. I personally, especially if these are hot peppers, woo! So, you wanna get rid of all the seeds, and they come right apart, these. And we're gonna use some of the water that we did the peppers in. Okay, for both of both our tamales and our other part of our the other part of our recipe for the masa, for the flour part of it. So just get rid of those seeds. That's almost done. And we're gonna chop we're gonna chop these up in a blender. Okay. And some of the seeds are already gone because when they were boiling, that's what happened. So this is about five or six um, of these ancho chilies. Right, just get all that off of there. And we're just about done. Okay, great. And then one more, I got that one done. And then we have one more here. And I called all my Mexican friends, like I said, my Hispanic friends and asked their advice and everybody gave me great advice. And so hopefully these will turn out much better than my last ones, which I, I practiced with. Now you wanna put these into the blender. And so I'm gonna put these into my blender. My, um, actually it's my Ninja. And we're gonna put some, some of the juice in there from the, um, actually the, uh, the juice from the peppers itself and a little bit of the uh, broth that we used for our wonderful um, meat. So we'll be right back in a minute. After I clean this up, we'll blend the peppers. And so you'll see what it looks like. We'll be right back. We're back on the Chef You and I, and now we're gonna grind the peppers up. We added some of the juice that we, or the water that we used from the peppers, and we used some from our meat, our pork, an onion that we did in the hot pot. And now we're gonna grind these peppers, okay? You wanna grind them a lot. Okay, and, and after that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and you're gonna take a sieve or a strainer to get out the particles from the peppers. But wait a minute. Okay, so we're gonna take this off, right? And then we're going to strain it. So now we're taking this off and we're going to strain it in with the strainer, as you see. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna swirl it around, <clears throat> swirl it around here. 
So you want to get all this wonderful um, pepper into, and you can see, you can see with the camera, there's pieces there. That's what you don't want in there. So, and very shortly, see, you can see it in there. It looks really good. But you can see that you've got a lot of that pepper mixture, and you don't want that in uh, the thing that you're going to use. Now, you're going to use half, half of the actual chili um, sauce with your pork, and we're going to boil that in a saute pan or get it hot, and we're going to put that on for about 30 minutes so that all those wonderful spices come together, okay? So this looks like we've got it all, okay? And what we'll do is we'll take this over here, get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. And when we're done with this, we'll rinse that out. And we'll take it over here. And now we have, I hope the camera can see this in a minute, we have this wonderful sauce that we made, and just a second, and you can see how beautiful that is. See it? That's what it should look like. Now we're going to use, we're going to take and put this aside for a minute, and we're going to take our meat out and cool it, and we're going to put it in our saute pan with half of this, and then the rest of it we're going to put into our masa. So let's do this first. Let's get our meat out and we'll let that cool off for a few minutes and we'll be right back after these important messages on Catherine Rager's The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I and what I'm doing next is... I am actually going to, the meat we've taken out, it cooled down. And now, um, actually, if you're using a pork roast or pork shoulder, you're going to get pieces easier. Unfortunately, with a the loin, they, it separates really fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm cutting these up into pieces, right, and not shredding it, you know, as much as they say to shred it because it works better, actually, when you're putting it into the tamale. And um, I'm hoping everybody's going to love my tamales. Uh, I, like I said, I'm using my friend, Lyle Olke's recipe from his famous restaurant. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the skillet, but I'm going to put it in the bowl first, right? And that was one loin. Of, I mean, you get two loins when you buy... Uh, pork loin. So I'm only using one because there's only two of us, right? So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add in uh, a little bit of this uh, wonderful chili sauce to it. That should be enough. And then I'm going to use the rest of it for my masa. So let's put that in. So you're going to get that all, all over the meat, right? And we're going to actually use some of the juice that I used from the, um, the actual when I made my uh, pork loin. So I'm going to take this over and I'm going to pour this into my pan. And I'm going to get that in there. And the, we'll get the, that on camera in just a minute. So that's about all of it. So there's not too many of us tonight. So I'm going to put some extra juice in there, and then I'm going to turn the skillet on, on low. And actually, I may use a little bit more. Okay. You want to use that juice. That's enough. All right. And we're going to pour, pour that in there. And let's stir it up. Look at all that beautiful chili sauce. Now, that's going to get into your meat, right? And so let's turn this on low and put the top on for about a half an hour. Okay, just turn that low. And this is one of the saute pans that I love to walk to use. And now what we're going to do is, and you want to keep that on low. You don't want to, so we're going to time that for about 30 minutes. Okay, so let's time it for 30 minutes. And then we're going to add about 30 minutes. So it has enough time, maybe 
maybe 24, okay? Well, this little timer just doesn't like to work with me. And then do timer. Okay, it should be working. Right, it's working. So we're gonna take this over here. And we're gonna rinse this out. And then we're gonna actually um, make our masa, because this takes a while. And actually, you know, most um, Mexican families, Hispanic families, actually make it as a group a lot of times or as a family member because you've got to, what the thing which you have to do with the masa is you have to make it into dough and it has to be kneaded and kneaded and kneaded. So what we're going to do that's a little different, and I've watched quite a few different videos because I really needed to, and to see how we're going to make this happen, I am going to use... Some people use butter. Uh, I'm going to use lard. Um, and we're going to use a half a, I think it's a half a cup of lard. And I just have to get my recipe correct quickly. We're back on the chef, you and I, and now we are going to make the dough, the masa. So we're going to add the masa flour. We're going to add the grits, instant grits, right? got that and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of mix this together okay so it's kind of coming together and then I'm going to add my cumin I'm going to add my cumin and I'm going to add my salt and pepper okay so that's the first thing I do uh, and I'm going to need a half a cup of water which I will get in a minute but the first thing is is that we're going to actually mix this all together. And this becomes like a dough, okay? So I've got, I've got lard here that I've actually, um, I melted in my microwave and I'm gonna add this to it. And then I'm gonna add my oil and then I'm gonna add all my other ingredients till it becomes like, um, like pie dough, right? And you can see that that's what it's becoming. And then you add the other oil into it. And you're going to work at this like you do pie dough. So here we go. And I'm going to need the water here in a second. Add a little bit of water to it. And you're going to do this kind of gradually, as you see I'm doing. And then I'm going to add some of the... Um, the uh, what do you call it, uh, the chili water, and then we're gonna add some of the water from there as well. So you see it's starting to come together. We're gonna add some more oil, and then let's get some water out of here. Okay, and this is really good because you want some of that broth. Now you can see we're getting there. It takes time though, because you're gonna mix this together, just like I said, like pie dough, and usually more than one person helps you do this in the family. So we'll get there. We'll take a break in a second, but I want to get this worked so you can see what it looks like. But I'm going to add some more of that broth. And don't get the onion in there. All right. And just keep mixing it. And we're going to take a little short break, and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and I'm going to show you how you do your tamales, and then you put them into the pan to steam them. So the, I've made one tamale already, and I'm going to stack it right here in this, this uh, colander, and then we're going to make the next one. So you take your, you take your uh, uh, corn stalk, right, and that's the hard side there. So what we want to do is we want to take some of our masa dough and we want to put it right there what you want to do is get it down and you want to spread it across okay and actually uh, if you're using Lyle's recipe it might not come out like you know just flour and masa so what we're doing is we're spreading it because we need to leave that top up there um, actually and I, this is actually easier to do with your hands, I think. So remember to leave part of it so they can, so it can, you can put your meat in there and you can roll it. So, and if you've got a tool that, that you can use, and you can buy them online, actually. 
So let's just get this over here, right? You want to get it all the way over to the ends, right? And you want it to be smooth, okay? And that looks good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add our meat mixture that we have cooked up. You see where I have the meat? I have it in the middle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to roll it tight. So we start like this and we roll it tight. There. And then what you want to do is you want to fold that bottom part. And you want to put this right in here like I have it. And you're going to stack them in here. Okay, so we'll do the next one. And everybody does it a little differently. So we want, don't want to come all the way down here because we need to have this to fold. Okay, so I'm doing it like this. And actually, this is pretty workable the way I've got it. And if you use the knife like I did, just do that. And you don't want them to be wet. They need to be dry when you do this. And like I said, it can be a project the whole family can do together. And everybody's are a little bit different. We are back on the chef. You and I am just doing the last couple of tamales, okay? And this is really too much here, so I'm going to get rid of some of this and some of this over here as well, okay? Because I don't have very much masa, so I need to do what I can do here. And so anyhow, let's do this. And there's only two of us, so you can freeze these. But you have to let them cool after you do them. You have to do that. And they'll stay in your freezer for at least three months. Okay. So let's do that. Let's put the last of the meat in here. Right. And I think I have an, I don't even have enough to do one more. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it over like that. And then fold it over like that. And then you put this end up like that. And then you put it in here like that. Right. We need to cut that off a little bit. Hold on, so it'll fit. There we go. And then I think I can do one more. I think I have enough for one more. All right, so let's do this. It'll be a small one, right? I have enough in here for this. And since I wasn't making a lot because my family's not that big, you know, I. I can make a small one for a child or something with this, maybe. How about that? Let's cut this off. Okay. So do that. Because you don't want it a lot up here because you want to fold that over. And that's really still big here. So let's cut this a little bit more. And kids love these, actually. And a lot of... Um, Families actually make these at Christmas time or holidays, and they usually make dozens of them for their family members. At least almost all my friends that I've talked to tell me that's exactly what happens. So let's do that. And I do have some more meat, so let me get some more meat out of there. And we'll strain that a little bit. This, this is actually really, really good. I can't even tell you how tasty it is. So we'll put it over here, and then I'm going to add the meat here, right here. This is for a child, remember, so don't worry about it. And put it in there, and then you fold it over like that, and you fold it over like that. And then you bring this up, and we're going to cut this off a little bit because guess what? There's a little too much there. So we're going to put this right here. So you have them all right here. And then you're going to do this. You're going to take some of your other corn husk. And since we don't have any more, we can just put a, we could take some of these leaves and put them on there. Right? Right there. And now we're going to take, and we're going to put the top on this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this into, onto our, fire right 
or stove. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back in about an hour when they're done and an hour to an hour and a half you need to steam them on low. So we'll take it over here. And we'll turn this on. And you want to steam them on low. And we're going to do it for about an hour. And we'll be back in a few minutes on The Chef You and I. We're going to do our rice. And so we'll have our full meal when we're finished. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef You and I. And we're making our Mexican rice now. And the first thing you want to do is you want to um, take two tablespoons of um, oil, canola oil or olive oil, whatever, and put it in. I'm doing it in a frying um, a pan, actually, that um, is coated and not use an aluminum pan they said to, to make this because you want the rice to do it so you're going to use actually one cup of dry long grain white rice so you heat the oil which we've done and I'm going to add the rice and cook the rice and stirring it for a few minutes till it gets brown okay so we want to do this so like this so you want to wait until it gets brown. So I'm getting like the oil on the rice, right? So we're going to let it sit there for a little while until it browns a little bit, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to add, you're going to, until it gets golden brown. So we're going to let it get golden brown. And then um, it, you're going to do it similar to the way you usually do it, but we're going to add to it, um, uh, we're going to add our tomato sauce. We have tomato sauce, teaspoon of chili powder. Um, and actually, we're not using garlic in this. It's optional. And we're going to add two cups of warm water. So what we're doing is we're getting it just brown. And then we'll add all the other ingredients to it. And then you simmer it for 20 minutes. And then you've got wonderful Spanish rice. So keep an eye on your rice because you don't want to burn it. You just want to brown it. So, so I don't think I want to get it any darker than this. I think I'm ready to add my, the rest of my uh, ingredients to it. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is turn it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to add my um, actually one teaspoon of chili powder. And put that on there. Okay, and then we're going to add our tomato sauce, which is four ounces of canned tomato sauce. So let's stir that all in. Now I've got some other uh, wonderful, if you can see that, and get all that rice covered and that's actually what you know um, the rice is going to have that kind of reddish color to it and that's what you see when you're in the Mexican restaurant now what I'm going to do is add the water and you're going to let this simmer for about 20 minutes until all the water is gone right so that looks perfect so we're going to turn this off and in about 20 minutes, we've got it down to a simmer. We're going to put our top on. Okay. And we'll let that go. And we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I. And everything is finished. I am so excited. Everything turned out perfectly. A lot better than, than I thought. And I'm going to have a little wine. I'm going to put a little bit of Wine RX into my wine. Because you know that I get headaches from it. So... Without, with this now, I can drink wine beautifully. So I've made tamales, which, and a Mexican salad, uh, and also Mexican rice and cornbread. And I want to say, I think I did a pretty good job for the first time I've ever made tamales. I am so excited about trying them. And I know you will be too. All of our recipes will be up on The Chef You and I. And don't forget to go to thechefyouandi.com. And bon appetit. 
See you next time on The Chef You and I. Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show. 